Hello and welcome back to the character customization tutorial for Empire part 3 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? And I would also like to thank three new patrons that are joined this month and those are Jim Save, Sumi and Kipling Andrews and I hope that I have pronounced your names correctly. So thank you so so much for supporting me and my channel. I would like to preface this video by saying that I'm just recovering from the flu and so my voice hasn't yet completely recovered but I wanted to make sure that I get a video out for you as soon as possible so I'll try to speak as clearly as I can. So in this video we're going to make sure that the character customization screen is going to be shown to the player when they launch the game and then they also are going to be able to input a name for the character and then press on the start button in order to start the game. So for that, we're going to create a new screen that we're going to call start screen. And in there, we're going to add the start button as well as the input field. And then we're going to include the character customization screen to show the actual character and the arrow buttons. So let's go ahead and create this new screen underneath this scene one label. So we're going to say screen, start screen, and then we're going to add a background image to this screen. So we're going to say image. And then the file path is going to be backgrounds and background.png. And then we'll resize this to be half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size. And then we can go ahead and add the start button, which is going to be an image button. So we're going to say image button and this one has an idle and hover state so we're going to say auto like so and then the file path that is start button is ui and then start button and then we're going to say dash percent s dot png and the percent s is going to be replaced with either the idle or the hover state depending on if we are hovering on the image button or not and then we'll go ahead and align this image button. So we're going to say align. And this is going to be at 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. And now we're going to add an action to this image button. And this action is going to take the player to the label scene one. But you can of course take your players to whatever label or screen that is appropriate for your game. So for that we're going to say action and then jump and scene one and then we'll go ahead and add the input field to the screen so that the player can add a name to their character and for that we're going to start by creating a h box so we're going to say h box like so and this is going to align whatever displayables that we're putting inside of it side by side so the first thing we're going to do is to align this h box so we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 and then we'll add a label for the input field and for that we're going to say text character name and then we'll size this text so we're going to say size and this is going to be 18 and then we'll give it a color and this is going to be black so we're going to add hash symbol and six zeros so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll align this in the center of the hitch box on the Y axis. So we're going to say Y align 0 0.5. And then to make this text stand out more against the background, we're going to give it some outlines. So for that, we're going to say outlines and then two square brackets like so. And then inside of these two brackets, we're going to add two round brackets like so. And then we're going to say instead of these two round brackets, absolute 2 which is going to give the text 2 pixels of outline and then we're going to add a comma after those two brackets right there like so and then we're going to add the color for the outlines so we're going to add two quotation marks and this is going to be a white color so we're going to add hash symbol and then six f characters and then after that we're going to say zero and zero so now we're going to get two pixels of outline with zero offset and now we'll go ahead and add the actual input field so for that we're going to create a new line 
and then we're going to create a frame so that we can add a background color for the input field. So we're going to say frame and then background and we're going to make this a white background and if we don't do this then we're going to get an input field that is just a line that is blinking without any other indication that there is an input field there. So adding a frame with a background is going to make it a lot more visible. So for the color we're going to say hash symbol and then 6f characters and then we'll align this on the y-axis again so we're going to say y align 0 0.5 and now we're going to go ahead and add a input displayable to this frame so for that we're going to say input and then we're going to say value and the value property takes an input value object and in this case, we're going to use one that is going to allow us to change a variable's value according to what the user has put into the field. And for that, we're going to say variable input value, like so. And then instead of these two brackets, we're going to add the name of the variable that we want to change. And this we can call character name, like so. And we'll also add a min width property to this input field that is going to make it a little bit wider than by default. So we're going to say min width, and this is going to be 150. And I'm also going to make sure that the player can't enter in a too long name. So for that, I'm going to say length and 10. So that means that the length of the name can only be 10 characters, but you can of course make this longer or shorter if you want. So with that done, we're going to create a few of the lines underneath here and then go inwards two steps, so one, two, like so. And then we're going to include the character customization screen into the screen so that it will also show at the same time. So we're going to say use character customization, like so. So now that we have done that, we're going to make sure that we also create this character name variable so that we have somewhere to store the name that the user has entered into this input field. And for that, we're going to create a few empty lines underneath this start screen, like so. And then we're going to define this variable by using the define statement. So we're going to say define character name. And this is going to be an empty string as the initial value before the user has entered in a value into the input field. And then we can also go ahead and straight away create a character object that is going to use this name that the player has entered in. And for that, we're going to say define, and I'm going to call this character object C, which stands for character. And then I'm going to say is equal to character. And then we're going to pass in the name parameter. So we're going to say name is equal to, and this is going to be equal to the actual variable. So we're going to say character name, like so. But for this to work properly, so that this character name variable is going to be replaced with the actual name that the user has entered in. We're going to have to pass in the dynamic parameter as well. So for that, we're going to add a comma after this string and say dynamic is equal to true, like so. So now we have a screen that has an input field where the user can input the name of their character. And then we have a character name variable that is going to store the value that the user has put into that field. And then we also have a character object that is going to represent the character together with the name that the user has chosen. Now, before we go ahead and do anything else, we're just going to make a few quick corrections inside of this character customization screen. And that has to do with the alignment of each of these buttons right here. So as you can see, I have forgotten to align the buttons on the Y axis so that they will be on different levels. So for these two buttons right here that controls the skin, we're going to align this at 0.4 on the y axis. So we're going to change the 0.3 to say 0.4 and the same below here, like so. And the next set of buttons that controls the eyes, we're going to align this at 0.5, like so. And the last set is going to be 0.6, like so. So now let's go ahead and adjust this scene one label a little bit. So instead of having just a normal narration text right here, we're going to have our character say this text instead. 
So we're going to say C and then this is a custom character like so. So now let's go back into the start label and in here we're going to say instead of jumping to scene one we're going to call the start screen. So we're going to say call screen start screen like so. And then the last thing we're going to do before we go ahead and launch the game is to just resize the start button instead of this start screen so that it's not going to be too big. So for that we're going to say at half size. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So here inside of the game we can now see that we have a few things available. So first of all we have the input field up here together with the input label right here. So let's go ahead and try this first. So let's say that I want my character to be named Emma. So I can write in Emma like so. And then I'm going to try to enter in a bunch of more letters. And as you can see it stopped at a certain point because we only allowed a maximum of 10 letters. And it is generally a good idea to limit an input field to a specific number of characters depending on what you want to do. And in this case because this is going to be the name of the character that is going to show up together with a dialogue. We don't really want the name to be too long on the screen so that it takes up too much space. So it's good to limit it down to a smaller number. But you can of course experiment with this to see what you like the best. And then we also have the character here in the middle and the arrow buttons to the side that controls the looks of the character. And we can see that when we are hovering over a arrow button it will zoom in just a little bit and then zoom out again when we move away from it. So that will indicate to the player that these arrow buttons are interactable. So let's go ahead and try to customize our character. So when I press on the top button right here, I can change the hair and I can change the hair by going this way as well, like so. And then we have the skin buttons and then we have the eyes and then we have the shirt. So as we can see that does seem to work indeed. Now let's also go ahead and press the start button to see what happens. And as we can see we jumped to the scene 1 label where we have our character that we have customized right here together with a piece of dialogue right here. And in the dialogue we have the custom name that we entered in earlier on into the input field. So now we know that that is working correctly. But now what is going to happen when we click with the mouse on the screen? Well, what happened was, when we clicked with the mouse, the game progressed just as it is intended to do. And because we didn't have any more code inside of our scene one label, and we didn't have a return statement either, Renpai just simply went on to the next piece of code that comes underneath the label, which happens to be the start screen. And because Renpai went automatically to the start screen, because there was nothing else to do, then we also lost the customization that we did to the character. But that would probably never be a problem in your game because you most likely would have a label that would have a last line of code that would lead to another label or to a screen for example. And so the label would never naturally end without having something else happen. But for this tutorial's sake we're just going to call the start screen as the last piece of code instead of a label in order to solve the problem. So let's go back to the code and do that now. So here back instead of our script again Instead of just having this piece of dialogue being the last thing to show instead of our scene one label, we're going to go ahead and call the start screen. So we're going to say call screen start screen, like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game again to see how this is going to work like. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing as we did before. So I'm going to give my character a name. And then I'm just going to change some of these parts of the character, like so. And then press the start button. And then click again in order to progress the story. And as we can see, now that we went back to the start screen again, this time it retained all of the changes that we did before. So now we know that this is working as it should. So now you can go ahead and use the character customizer in your game and have the player choose the way that they want their character to look like and then use that character throughout the game wherever it should be shown. 
So a quick recap on how to use the character composite throughout your game. If you have a label like this scene one label, for example, to show the character inside of your game, all you need to do is say show and then the name of the composite, which in this case is character. And then optionally, you can apply a transform like right here. And if you have a screen like our character customization screen, in order to add the composite to the screen, all you have to do is to say add and then in two quotation marks, you add the name of the composite. So with this knowledge, you should now be able to show the character composite throughout your game in various parts. Now, the reason why we created a start screen and then included the character customization screen into that instead of just making these two screens into one screen is so that you can use the character customization screen together with other screens throughout your game. So let's say in your game, you have a start screen like this where you want your player to be able to customize the character before they launch the main game. But then throughout the game, you also want the player to be able to customize the character. And in such a case, you might not want to go back to the start screen to customize the character, but you rather want a preferences screen. And in such a case, you can create that preferences screen and then include the character customization screen into that one as well. And in that preferences screen, you may also have other buttons and other things that you want to show. The last thing we're going to do before we are completely finished is to make sure that the user cannot press on the start button unless they have put in a character name. And for that, we're going to wrap this jump action in an if action, and that is going to look like this. If, and then an opening round bracket, like so, character name does not equal to an empty string, and then a comma. So if this condition is true, that the character name is not an empty string, then we can go ahead and jump to scene one. So for that, we're going to say true is equal to, like so. And then we're going to add an ending round bracket on this side, like so. But then if this condition is false instead, then we're going to add a comma after this jump action, like so. And we're going to say false is equal to. And in this case, we're going to use a function inside of RenPy called notify, which is going to pop up a notification on the screen to tell the user that they have to enter in a name for the character before they can start the game. So for that, we're going to use the function action. So we're going to say function, like so. And now instead of this function action, we're going to say rempy.notify. And then we're going to pass in a parameter for this notify function. So we're going to add a comma after that. And then we're going to add a string, which is going to be the message that we want the notify function to show to the user. And that is going to be, please enter a character name, like so. So now if the character name variable is not an empty string, if that is true, then we are jumping to scene one. But if it's false, then we're going to show a message to the user. So with that, let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game again to see what this looks like. So now without entering a name for the character, let's go ahead and press the start button and see what happens. And as we can see, we get a message up on the screen right here that says, please enter a character name. So we know that that is working correctly. Now let's try to enter a name and then press start. And that is working correctly as well. And with that said, we have now completed this tutorial series. And I hope that you found it useful and interesting to follow along with, and that maybe you will also implement a character customizer into your game. And if you did like this series, I would very much appreciate if you left a comment down below to let me know and press the like button. So with that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next series.